Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Udayan. Uh, I'm a recent graduate from IT Media Lab. And for the past uh, few years, I've been thinking about how do you uh, program physical materials and uh, translate that to uh, a way to program reality. And uh, one specific material that I've been thinking about is sort of to translate uh, water droplets into computational entities. So in some sense, I work on R, not an AR or VR, just R for reality. So uh, physicist Rolf Landauer, in his uh, famous work, he said that information is physical. What he uh, essentially meant is that uh, information that's stored uh, on computers, or be it text on a wall, or uh, carvings in a cave, all of this is sort of uh, physical changes in materials. And that's sort of the, a notion that he planted within the uh, scientific community. And inherently, if you think about sort of how we've been computing, uh, starting from the days of Abacus to uh, the Babbage machine, or even the uh, uh, electronic computers today, so all of these are physical in that the information that's being stored, moved, and manipulated, all of this is a, like, is a physical matter. Now, if you take this quite literally, um, you know, this is uh, one specific related work which was uh, done by uh, uh, yeah, Manu uh, Prakash and uh, Neil Gershenfeld, where they actually move tiny drops of water, uh, tiny bubbles trapped in a tube to uh, actually create physical computers. Uh, so this sort of became uh, one of the uh, foundational work to uh, some of the uh, things that I do. And um, I, when I came to the Media Lab, I uh, joined the Tangible Media Group, where we think about how do you uh, computationally uh, control physical matter. And in this specific example, uh, we use what is called a shape display. Uh, it's essentially uh, pins which rise and collapse, and you can uh, program them to uh, move physical objects. And that sort of uh, becomes a way to interact with the digital world. And the sort of notion of uh, programming physical objects has been a uh, body of work that's been developed by our group. And uh, pushing this further, GFA uh, from my group sort of started uh, working on ways to uh, print uh, tiny micropillar structures, which is uh, essentially hair. And you can sort of um, um, create ways to passively actuate and determine how objects move. And so this sort of uh, is an alternate way of thinking about how do you uh, manipulate physical matter computationally. Um, so I started looking around and sort of thinking about, uh, you know, we are surrounded by water. And how can you uh, use computation to uh, uh, manipulate water droplets? And how can you translate that into computer interfaces? And um, I, you know, so these images sort of uh, uh, tell you the story of how we are surrounded by water droplets uh, everywhere. We interact with them by uh, you know, touching them, washing in rain. We walk through them. Birds play with them. And you, know, you have all these sorts of uh, you know, like, uh, examples of uh, water droplets in uh, your real life. So the, the next question that I started looking at was, if we are already interacting with water in our real life, so then what's nature doing about it? Um, and when I looked at nature, so these are some examples of how water exhibits all these amazing uh, phenomena, like being able to uh, bend light or dance on a lotus leaf surface or trap and move tiny physical objects. So the next question that I started asking was, can we combine the two where you have all these amazing properties and you're already interacting with them? Can you slap computation onto it to create interfaces with droplets? Now, if you uh, look at how people have been look, uh, manipulating water droplets, there's a few different uh, prior art in specific. Uh, you know, there's uh, acoustic manipulation of uh, uh, droplets, which is sort of a nice demonstration of uh, uh, computationally controlling water droplets. So. Uh, but then I wanted, I wanted to uh, create something more sophisticated and really move towards uh, uh, 
moving towards a, a world where there is no difference between computation and physical matter. And I started looking at uh, how do you use electric field to manipulate water. And uh, this goes back to uh, a very early experiment done by a uh, physicist, uh, Lipman, where he used uh, uh, a, a liquid in a tube to, uh, and applied electric field to uh, change the shape. And this has been widely used in uh, creating liquid lenses and also in biology for automation, uh, automation of uh, full-fledged biological experiments. So I started by sort of replicating some of these experiments where you can apply an electric field. And here there's a tiny chickpea-sized uh, droplet that's uh, changing its shape as I uh, cha uh, uh, change the potential. So now, um, starting from there, I started thinking about how can you then push it to uh, create displays with water? Can that then become a material display? And pushing that further, I sort of uh, used these jiggling droplets to, uh, letter, to display letters TMG, which is the tangible media group, uh, and sort of thinking about how can you uh, use water droplets in your environment to uh, uh, create these uh, ambient displays, so to say. Um, and you can not only uh, change their shape, you can also sort of like move them up and down and render physical information. Um, and here's a, a little uh, sine wave being. So going back to the idea of information is physical, I, was sort of, I wanted to push this further to think about not just use it as a uh, display which displays uh, information in the traditional digital sense, but rather can you use the information in the physical matter itself for interaction is the next question that I started asking. And here's a uh, uh, simple uh, uh, set of examples and uh, a video that I put together to sort of think about uh, how can you uh, uh, turn water droplets into interfaces. Uh, would be good if you don't uh, shoot the video of what's uh, being shown now. This is uh, not publicly published yet. So uh, pictures are fine, but no videos, please. Um, so here's a simple examples of uh, two uh, droplets sort of uh, waltzing around each other. You can precisely position them and uh, trigger when they merge. And um, you can then sort of think about using these merge operations to uh, uh, create a real world example where here a user is uh, scanning a physical object to pick the color uh, and the, of the object, and uh, that's being rendered now uh, with the paint droplets. You can then uh, uh, move them back and forth to stir, then the user sort of uh, paints with it. Um, you can push this even further to uh, create um, a range of colors by uh, uh, diluting the paint samples. Uh, that then gives you a swatch, which is in a digital sense, a gradient of colors which you can paint with. So the next question that I started asking is, so the information in the physical matter, which is the paint itself is manipulable, uh, can you then sort of uh, reimagine uh, it for entertainment and gaming and play? Here's uh, sort of a physical version of a Pac-Man where uh, you sort of uh, tilt the uh, little interface uh, to chase a little character. Uh, and a classic example uh, that I sort of uh, love uh, is sort of to establish communication between people. And here's an example of sort of how uh, you could connect traditional devices with uh, uh, these uh, water uh, droplet displays. And here's uh, uh, one person sending a message to the other. Um, and the same uh, information is uh, then uh, sort of rendered on a, uh, uh, on a, on a glass screen. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, a body of work that's been uh, developed in the human interaction community is sort of think about uh, not just uh, pixels as interfaces, but uh, physical materials changing properties like shape uh, and using them as uh, interfaces. And here's an example of uh, how you can just take a regular piece of paper and uh, program uh, these droplets to trigger how the uh, paper folds. And that sort of is a um, uh, direction for creating uh, shape-changing interfaces uh, with uh, water droplets. So, uh, so provided this is a interaction design conference, 
uh, and sort of uh, AR VR conference. I didn't want to talk about the biology side of things. I just wanted to uh, sort of uh, stir up the imagination to think about how can you uh, reimagine uh, the physical materials around you and can you slap computation onto it to create uh, interfaces. And uh, I think that information is uh, physical. Thank you.